Capcom are responsible for creating some of the most iconic arcade fighting games in the history of the genre, and this new collection, which brings 10 of the company's past games together into one package, is just about to release on the Nintendo Switch. Will this game gracing your Switch be the most important day of your life, or to you, will it just be Tuesday? Full disclaimer, the game actually comes out on Friday, but that would have spoiled the joke. I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to Capcom for the review code, and now, let's find out. So as mentioned, the Capcom Fighting Collection brings together 10 fighting games from Capcom's history, with 9 having released during the 1990s and 1 during the 2000s. 8 of the games included have both the Japanese and English versions, whereas the other 2 just have the Japanese versions. Let's have a look at the 10 games in a bit more detail now. The first one is Darkstalkers The Night Warriors. This released in arcades in 1994 and uses the same gameplay system Capcom developed for Street Fighter 2. It includes 10 playable characters and introduced some new mechanics such as air blocking. The Japanese version is called Vampire The Night Warriors. Night Warriors Darkstalkers Revenge is the 1995 sequel to Darkstalkers and also released for the Sega Saturn a year later. This adds two new characters as well as making the two bosses from the first game playable characters. Vampire Savior The Lord of the Vampire or Vampire Savior World of Darkness released in 1997 in arcades and on the PlayStation and Saturn in 1998, albeit only in Japan in the case of the Saturn. This game edited the roster somewhat from the second game with three characters removed and four new characters added. Here traditional rounds are replaced with players instead having two life bars which they use as soon as one is depleted, similar to that found in games like Killer Instinct. Vampire Hunter 2, Darkstalkers Revenge and Vampire Savior 2, The Lord of the Vampire are the two games on here with just Japanese versions and I believe this is down to the fact that both of these are updated versions of Vampire Savior with a few tweaks made to gameplay and the rosters. Cyberbots Full Metal Madness released in arcades in 1995 and is a fighting game spin-off of a Capcom beat-em-up called Armored Warriors which itself was included on the Capcom beat-em-up bundle also available on the Switch. Hyper Street Fighter 2 The Anniversary Edition is the latest release of the 10 games hitting arcades in 2003 in Japan and 2004 in North America as well as later receiving ports to the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. As well as selecting game speeds you can also choose between any of the versions of Street Fighter 2 with this determining which characters are available, their movesets, animation frames and picture. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo changes things up completely by being a tile matching puzzle game based on the Street Fighter and Darkstalkers series. It released in 1996 and was subsequently ported to a number of systems. Super Gem Fighter Minimix is a chibi-fied fighter using the characters from a few of Capcom's other fighters. As well as your basic fighting, various gems will be scattered across the stage at certain points which power up your character and there are also elemental orbs that you can throw to deal damage or inflict a status effect. And finally, Red Earth is a fantasy themed fighting game that was the first game to use Capcom's CP System 3 arcade board. Every other game on this compilation used the System 2, in fact Hyper Street Fighter 2 was the final game to ever use that system. Red Earth has never before been ported to a system since its 1996 arcade release. In terms of the lineup, it has a fair amount of variety, although it is perhaps a little Darkstalkers heavy, but the inclusion of Red Earth was a good call, including Puzzle Fighter adds further variety, and the only proper Street Fighter game included wasn't on the recent 30th anniversary collection, so this furthers the value for money for owners of that particular release. It would have been nice to have a Marvel vs Capcom or Capcom vs SNK game on here, but I can appreciate that licensing issues may have been difficult with these. However, I do feel that a couple more games from the early 2000s or late 90s, something such as Power Stone, would have just rounded out the package nicely. I did enjoy having both English and Japanese versions included though, just seeing details like the characters of M. Bison, Bullrog and Vega having their names the way round that was originally intended when playing this way in Street Fighter is a great touch. Aside from this though, there are a number of quality of life features available. You can choose the difficulty level for each game, change the attack power and speed, or even change some of the restrictions of the original games, such as allowing for mirror matches when playing the World Warrior version of Hyper Street Fighter 2, something this version never catered for originally. Local two-player modes are available for all games and there is an online mode too, with casual, ranked and custom matches on offer, as well as a ranked leaderboard. 
There is a mode you can choose to be alerted when a match has been found, even if you are in-game or browsing the museum, a mode that we'll cover in a moment. With this being a pre-launch code, I wasn't able to find an online match, but no doubt this will populate on release. In terms of controls, the Switch controller makes use of the four face buttons and the R and ZR buttons to replicate the six buttons needed for most games. There are a number of control types to choose from, or you can individually assign commands to a particular button. There are also shortcuts for special moves, usually performed by pressing L and one of the directional buttons, although you can disable this option when looking for a match in online mode. I did find these a little temperamental with some characters whilst working perfectly with others. The Capcom collection does include a fair amount of variety, with the franchises included all playing differently and the games holding up incredibly well to this day. A couple more games from the early 2000s would have been appreciated just to extend that level of differentiation further, but what is here is great fun and gameplay gets 18 out of 20. With controls, while some games felt a bit easier to get to grips with than others, there is a good level of customization, and with practice and study in the move list, everyone can be competitive to some degree, they also get 18 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, considering that every game uses pixel art, there is actually a nice mix of different styles. The classic clean and colourful look of Street Fighter, to the almost comic book style of the Dark Stalkers monsters with their thick black outlines, the futuristic setting of Cyberbots, the chibi look to Puzzle Fighter and Super Gem Fighter, and then the larger scale of the sprites in Red Earth, which probably looks the most unique of the package owing to being just one of six Capcom games to use the CP System Freeboard. Some games do outshine others, personally I found Cyberbots a little bland in comparison to something like Vampire Saviour, but most people will find an art style that they gravitate towards in one of the games and the pixel art holds up very well across the board. This is a warts and all package and any slowdown present in the original games is here too and I found the biggest culprit to be Hyper Street Fighter 2, especially when playing the earlier versions of 2 held within that game. In terms of the music, again you have some of the most iconic music in video game history included in some of these titles. For my money, Ken's theme in Street Fighter is one of the best tracks written for a video game ever, and aside from the better known tracks, I found all of the music a joy to either discover or rediscover depending on the game I was playing. The music in the menus is a little generic, but it does do the job, and then you have the museum mode, which brings together more than 500 illustrations, including some never-before-seen concept art and behind-the-scenes material, and you can listen to over 400 music tracks taken from each title. It's great when collections include such features, although I did find the split of artwork shown for each title is quite uneven, with some having much more than others. The music mode, though, is fantastic. Visuals hold up incredibly well and each game franchise looks unique to the next. If slowdown was present back in the day then it's still present now and the gallery mode could have distributed its contents more evenly across releases. Visuals get 17 out of 20. Audio is a real treat with some classic tracks included. Some games are stronger than others in this respect but it's a high standard across the board and it gets 18 out of 20. The Capcom Fighting Collection costs £32.98 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. It goes without saying the longevity of this package will depend largely on your relationship with fighting games and your opinion of the games included. Hardcore fans could realistically plump some serious hours into this, whereas more casual fans will still no doubt get a decent amount of mileage by trying the 10 games and finding their favourites. For me personally, I like that they didn't go too Street Fighter heavy as much as I love that series as it would have been the easy route, but I do feel that replacing one of the Japanese exclusive Darkstalkers revisions for another franchise would have just kept things a little more fresh. What is here though does give a good amount of variety and I found a couple of games that I'd never heard of that I now really enjoy. Value gets 13 out of 20. To conclude, the Capcom Fighting Collection is a great way to celebrate the history of one of the most prolific developers in the fighting game genre. Veterans of the genre will have a field day revisiting some old classics, some of which are not easy to play any other way these days, fans of a specific franchise may well discover another game to their liking, and casual fans will no doubt enjoy the choice on offer, as long as they have the enthusiasm and stamina for repeat plays in order to feel they've got their money's worth. I would have liked to have seen a little more variety, just one more franchise I feel would have been sufficient, and I do also feel that perhaps some developer interviews to go with the museum feature would have been a nice touch, but fans of fighting games will have a great time here, no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah. 
Capcom Fighting Collection gets a switch up score of 84%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. Which of the games on this collection is your favourite? Please do let us know, or which game would you like to have seen included? Stick it all in the comments section. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.